chocolate is arguably the most delightful treat, and it goes well with every occasion, no matter what's being celebrated. From birthdays, Valentine's, Christmas, Easter, Eid, and Passover, to sitting in your living room to munch on a snack, chocolate is always an excellent idea. As delicious as chocolate is, you might be surprised to learn that it takes a long and complicated process to bring your favorite chocolate bar from the cacao tree to your mouth. So how is chocolate made? Let's find out. Cocoa beans are from the cacao trees, and they're commonly found in West African countries like Ghana, Nigeria, Cameroon, and Cote d'Ivoire. Fun fact, West Africa accounts for over 70% of the world's cocoa beans. The cacao trees produce pods, which when ripe, will be harvested for the cocoa beans. Each pod can yield about 30 to 40 cocoa beans. After the cocoa beans have been removed, they're kept in a wooden box covered with sacks or banana leaves to ferment. This takes about five to eight days. Fermentation ensures that there are no germs in the cocoa beans and that it has a great taste. It also helps destroy the seed coat, which is vital for the next step. After fermenting, the cocoa beans still have a large quantity of moisture, and moisture is bad for our beans. So they must be dried, reducing the moisture level to less than 7% to stop the fermentation process. Over-fermentation or re-fermentation of the cocoa beans can lead to spoilage or bad taste. The cocoa beans are then spread out on wooden slates for exposure to sunlight and fresh air, which allows for a natural drying process. An additional benefit of drying the cocoa beans is that it preserves them so they can be bagged, shipped, and stored for long periods. Once they arrive at their destinations, the cocoa beans are sent to silos and warehouses in their original packaging. Laboratory technicians are on the ground at this stage to inspect the cocoa beans. They must be healthy, well fermented, adequately dried, and not have suffered any damage during transport. The silo or warehouse where the cocoa beans are stored must also meet strict conditions. It must be isolated from other structures to prevent the beans from absorbing strong odors, and the storage area must be cool with proper airflow and humidity levels. The cocoa beans are delicate, and they must be treated as such to ensure only the best Snicker bars are created. The next step is for the cocoa beans to be screened and cleaned thoroughly to eliminate unwanted material. The cleaning system uses a conveyor belt to move the beans, and at this point, dried cocoa pulp, pieces of pod, stones, or twigs are removed. Then, a powerful vacuum extracts the last bits of jute fibers, sand, and wood. After they've been cleaned, the cocoa beans are heated in a micronized revolving drum, which helps to loosen their hard shells. Then, the beans are carefully weighed and inspected so that only those of a premium quality make it past this stage. Chocolate, and really anything made from cocoa, has a distinct aroma that makes our mouths water when we smell it. This lovely aroma comes from the next step, which is roasting. Roasting the cocoa beans further reduces their moisture content, changing their color to a rich brown, and it gives them the signature delicious aroma we're fond of. The roasting is done in large rotary cylinders that turn the beans over and over for anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours, depending on the variety of the beans and the desired result. Roasting also makes it easier for the cocoa beans to be deshelled, as we'll see in the next step. Once the cocoa beans have been roasted, the shells become brittle and easy to remove. To make chocolate, only the cocoa nibs, which are left after the shell's been removed, are needed. But the shells also have their functions. They are rich in protein, fiber, minerals, and all sorts of good stuff that makes them a great addition to animal feed and garden fertilizer. They're also used in making cacao tea. So, the cocoa beans are placed in a special winnowing machine that uses burst of air to separate the shells from the cocoa nibs. The machine passes the beans between serrated cones so that they're cracked rather than crushed. At this point, different manufacturers use their unique blend of nibs of different varieties to create a special aroma. That's the chef's secret. Some manufacturers combine up to eight to 10 varieties of cocoa nibs to get their desired result. The cocoa nibs are now ready to be finely ground to release the cocoa butter, which makes up about 53% of the nibs. This step involves passing the cocoa nibs through refining mills, which grind them between large grinding stones. The result is a paste subjected to hydraulic pressure to release the cocoa butter. This paste is known as chocolate liquor. The released cocoa butter used in making chocolate and giving it a fine structure and shiny appearance is then stored at room temperature for later use. When properly stored, cocoa butter can last up to several years. 
If the manufacturer wants to make chocolate powder, they can pump the chocolate liquor into hydraulic presses to separate the cocoa butter, leaving a cake. The cake is further crushed, milled, and finely sifted using three to five vertically mounted steel rollers that rotate in opposite directions to create cocoa powder. Manufacturers may add other ingredients like nonfat milk, sugar, and flavoring to create their desired cocoa powder product. For regular chocolate, manufacturers add milk, sugar, cocoa butter, and other ingredients to the chocolate liquor. This goes into a mixer with rotating kneading arms that blend everything into a rough paste. The type and quantity of ingredients added at this point determines the eventual taste of the chocolate. The next step in the chocolate making process is conching. Conching involves placing the chocolate paste inside a surface scraping mixer, an agitator called a conch, which evenly spreads cocoa butter within the chocolate paste. It also polishes the chocolate particles, aerates the chocolate, and removes volatile acids, thereby eliminating residual bitterness. Conching times differ from manufacturer to manufacturer. Some chocolates are conched for up to four days, while some are not conched at all, or for just a few hours. Chocolate that's been conched has a smooth, velvety texture that most associate with our favorite chocolate brands. Tempering is the last step before the chocolate can be turned into the different chocolate bars you love. This process involves raising and lowering the temperature of the chocolate to alter the crystals in it. In the past, tempering was done manually, but there are now tempering machines that make the job much easier for large-scale chocolate manufacturers. Tempering gives the chocolate a shiny, firm, and crunchy texture, which is essential to how customers enjoy the chocolate. It also increases shelf life. If the chocolate is not tempered, it might appear dull and crumbly, and certainly not appetizing. At this point, the chocolate is edible, but not quite ready to be shipped off to different stores. It must first be molded and embellished with different yummy things like fruits, nuts, wafers, and fillings. While this is taking place, some of the chocolate that can not fit into the molding machines is temporarily stored in liquid form. It can also be solidified if it's stored for a more extended period. Once the chocolate is molded and cut to perfection, it must be decorated. This is where manufacturers add logos and any other decoration they wish to print on the chocolate. After this, the chocolate is left to cool down and solidify, then wrapped in foil or paper packaging to keep it fresh. Finally, the chocolate is ready to be shipped to distributors and stores where you can pick them up and enjoy. So now you know how chocolate is made, from when the cocoa seeds are harvested to when the chocolate is packaged and shipped to different stores and supermarkets for you to pick up. What's the next topic you'd like us to explore so you can see how it's made? Let us know in the comments. Also, like, subscribe, and share for more videos like this.